Everyone knows nowadays that light travels at a very, very fast speed, about 300 million meters in a second. That's, that's pretty fast. To give you a better idea, light could travel around the Earth at the equator somewhere around seven times in one second, and that 93 million miles it takes to get to, to, get to the sun, or that the sun is away from us, it takes light only 8.3 minutes. So when we talk about things like light years, we're really talking about a distance that light travels in a year. The sun is 8.3 light minutes away. That's 93 million miles. So how far does light travel in one year? Well, if you do some simple math, distance over time is velocity. Solve for the distance. Get rid of your units so you're left with number of meters, you get it to be about 9.5 times 10 to the 15th meters that light will travel in a year. That is an unbelievably large number. To put it in perspective, the next nearest star, not our sun, but the next nearest star is about 4.3 light years away. So 4.3 times that number you see. However, People had been thinking about light for a long, long time. The ancient Greeks wrote down things, and they, and they're, so they've been given credit for the first people to really think about light. And what they kind of thought was that light went from our eyes. So when our eyes gazed upon something, we saw it because light was actually coming from our eyes. Newton came around, and he did some experiments with prisms and things like that. He actually thought that light bounced off things like a particle does. So like if I throw a rock, it hits something and bounces off. He thought light did that type of thing. A guy by the name of Christian Huygens said, no, 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 light acts like a wave. And he realized waves bend as they move around things, and light did that very same thing. So he said, no, 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 light is a wave. Einstein came around and he said, Oh no, it's both. That light was both a particle and a wave. And this idea still stands today. Just a side note, he's the guy that gave us the term photon. A gentleman that came around before Einstein tried to figure out exactly how fast light travels. Because people didn't know if it was instantaneous, meaning as soon as you were to, let's say, strike a match, that it would be everywhere at the same time or if it took light time to travel from that match to your eye. Well 1675 rolls around and he decides to look at the moon Io which is going around Jupiter. The period or the rate at which Io goes around Jupiter was well established. People knew exactly how long it took. For convenience, let's say it took two days to go around Jupiter and end up at the same point. Well, he just simply said, if light has an actual speed to it, light coming from Jupiter's moon should take longer to go from A, point A when the Earth is in its orbit there, to point B, because there's a bigger distance. If it was instantaneous, when it's at point B, we should be able to predict exactly where Io would be, because every two days it'd be right back in that same spot. So he took the time discrepancy that there was at point B and did a little distance versus time, the distance being this orbital distance, and he figured out the speed of light. Unfortunately, his speed wasn't very correct because he used this wrong distance. But other than that, he did an excellent job on this experiment. This was important because the, this was the first time that someone could show that light had a finite speed. There was actually a speed to light. Later on, Albert Michelson comes around. This is back in the uh, 1800s. He takes a, an octagonal mirror on top of a mountain and 35 kilometers away, on top of another mountain, he puts another mirror. He takes an arc lamp 
and makes it shine onto that octagonal mirror. The mirror reflects the light from the arc lamp, reflects it to that mirror on the mountain that's 35 kilometers away. That light reflects off that mirror, comes back to the octagonal mirror, reflects off that, and goes to his eye. So that the round trip distance is 70 kilometers. So what he did is he spun this mirror around. And by doing so, he realized that he could figure out the speed of light. Now let's think about this in terms of, of chunks of light. If we imagine a chunk of light leaving the arc lamp, hitting the mirror, and as we're spinning the mirror, if it isn't lined up exactly, one eighth of a turn, right? It just needs to be, there's eight sides to this mirror, one eighth of a turn. If it doesn't line up to one eighth of a turn, he won't see it because if it's going too slow, it's going to miss his eye this way. If it's going too fast, it's going to miss his eye the other way. But if he does it just right, at just the right speed, he should see the light not blink and it should be a continuous flash. So that's what he did. And he figured out, based on the rate of rotation of that octagonal mirror and the distance the light had to travel, 35 kilometers each way, or a total of 70 kilometers, exactly how fast light travels. Let's do an example type of calculation that he would have done. So let's say that his eight-sided mirror spins at 30,000 revolutions per minute. That's how fast his thing is spinning, his mirror is spinning, for him to not see the light chopped up, for it to seem as a continuous beam. So, he had to figure out how many revolutions per second the mirror is spinning. Well, that's a very simple calculation. We know it's 30,000 30, 30, revolutions for every minute. We have to get rid of those units of minute and convert it to seconds. For every minute, there's 60 seconds. And of course, that comes out to 500,000 revolutions per second. 30,000 divided by 60. Next, what he did, he took the 500 revolutions per second, and he had to figure out how many seconds for one revolution. And so, basically, the units have been flipped, and therefore, the numbers have been flipped, so it's some number of seconds per 500 revolutions, so 1 500ths, which is 0 0.002 seconds. The next thing he did is he realized, okay, in order for me to see this light not blink, I don't need to know how much one revolution is, I need to know only one eighth of a turn, one eighth of a rev revolution. So I only need to know how much one eighth, the time for one eighth of one revolution is. So one eighth of 0 0.002 seconds is 0 0.00025 seconds. So that's how fast it took light to travel all the way here, all the way back, in the time that it took for this mirror to make one eighth of a rotation. So according to this, we just do a velocity equals distance over time. The distance was of course twice that 35 or 70 kilometers and divided by the time that we got that 0 0.00025 seconds and we get 280,000 kilometers per second. Now, I intentionally did not put the correct numbers in. It, they are correct for the math we did, but I intentionally did not get the correct speed of light.